Hello everyone, I'm back from my Jolly Boys outing weekend with Phil in North Yorkshire. Great fun, loved it. Gonna go back soon, I hope. But I'm back in the East Midlands, I'm in, well, just outside a place called Colville. Let's go under a bridge in Leicestershire. And I'm walking on George and Robert Stevenson's Swannington Incline. Now I know what you're thinking, after my last two videos, I'm somewhat obsessed with inclines. I'm not, I promise. This one is a means to an end. stop meeting like this and then I'll buy the fifth time it's just awkward isn't it so I'm walking up I will end up dropping back down though to get into Colville this was built as I say by George and Robert Stevenson father son duo as part of the Leicester and Swannington Railway in 1833 because we're right in the middle now of the Leicestershire coalfield so that railway was built to get that coal from here into the main city in Leicester into Leicester West Station which you might remember if you watched the video that me and my dad did on the Great Central in, in, um, in Leicester we actually took a little look at that station it ran till around about 1945 when other railways in the area had kind of taken over quite a lot and it you know it it, it served its purpose basically so there's a bridge across it's been shored up by that. Let's have a look here. A wooden bridge carried an ancient road called Pitley's Lane. Now Potato Lane. <laughs> I don't know why that's tickled me. When uh, George and Rob, G-Dog and Rob, were building this railway, they set up location in the area, obviously. And at that point, there was only one pit. Colville basically didn't exist. It was a street. It was called Long Lane. Didn't exist. You had you had Snibston, which was a village. You had Swannington, which was a village. And there was one colliery in this area of what is now Colville called Whitwick Colliery. That opened in 1824. That ran till about 1986, I think. Um, there was a horrendous disaster there in 1889, though, which took the lives of, of 35 men and boys. Fire underground. Horrendous. There is actually a plaque in Colville at a park in Colville for that, that they, they, they put up a memorial and then someone nicked it. Do you know what I mean? So that was the only pit that was here. And so George and Robert thought, well, hang on, if there's a coal seam here, I, I, I kind of want a little bit of that. So they sank one pit in 1831. That didn't really do much because it flooded loads because actually there was there was ancient mining here so obviously there was there was kind of shafts left right and center which were uncharted so it kept flooding so that one was gone in no time then there was a second one opened that's what we're going to look at today snibson colliery 2 that lasted until 1983 and there are a lot of remains and then they sunk a third one which is just off of this of this incline um, Snibston Colliery 3 um, and that opened in 1833 and again that one didn't last very long you know 20 years or so um, for the same reason um, as they were flooding and there was subsidence and there was hard rock they couldn't get through and it just didn't work that well really but the second one that was the winner winner chicken dinner apologize for the wind although I don't know how windy that is or whether it's just do you know what I mean the trees are just making it sound but you can see there, look at that incline up and stomping up. It's not quite the Ingleby one in the last video. Still feeling my legs from that. Here we go, this is at the top. Apologise for the wind. There's some kind of winding equipment, look. Here we go. I've spotted some track. Dreamland. Oh, look at this. So this would have been 
the winding house then I'm guessing these were the uh, probably the foundations I mean it's new brick by the look of it so I'm guessing they've just kind of do you know what I mean just charted over it again to show where it was I'm seeing a message board there which is always exciting I doubt that's original. I imagine that's probably been relayed as a, as a commemorative thing. Right, can hardly make out any of that. Swannington Heritage Trust. Well, that's good that it's got one. There we go, look at that. Doesn't seem to go that far down, but I bet it did. We're just about across the road, hence the noise. And then we should be almost at, at the third pit, Snipson Colliery 3. That was the last one to open, opened in 1833, again by George and Robert Stevenson. And that went in 1895. Um, so not a particularly long life. Again, lots of flooding, subsidence, all that sort of stuff. Same as, as the first colliery. But there is a memorial at this one. So the internet tells me. Um, so that's something. The first one... Uh, that's nothing, that's a Morrison's, I think. Um, so there's literally nothing left of that one. Whereas this, this third one has something, I think. So there you go, track follows off that way. We come off, I'm pretty sure now, if I don't get run over, we're kind of walking into, into the site of that colliery. That would be a bit of a clue, although that is quite a small wheel. There you go, that's more like it. Look at that, 700 years of, of, of coal mining in this area. Wow. Okay, going to get back on the Swannington Leicester Railway now. And I'm just going to stomp on the, uh, on the old track bed for a bit. Oh, I've spotted stingers. Here we go. Party started. By the sound of the, the the vehicles I can hear now, that sounds like a busy road. So I reckon that's where this probably ends. Or maybe, thinking about it, this is shut off because you know there's there's mine shafts and stuff around. That could be an explanation why you can't get down there. Right, I'm gonna walk around then. I'm following something now, it says the mining heritage trail. So I'll keep walking on this then. Um, then there is a dual carriageway. I've looked on Google Maps that dissects it. And then after that, you've got the, the Burton to Leicester railway line that dissects it as well. That is just a freight line now. I mean, sometimes I think like crazy rarely they might get a passenger train kind of redirected through there or whatever, but it's, it's overwhelmingly a freight line now. This, this, line that I was trying to be on would actually then go into that and would join that. So what I'm going to have to do is kind of follow this around a bit and then join up again on the other side of that line. Okay, so I've come across that main road, which is actually called Stevenson Way, um, which is nice, kind of a bit of a throwback. And now I'm walking across that Leicester to Burton line, which I say is just a freight line, although it don't look that open. There's two stop signs there, look, so they've obviously not got workings that often. But if you look at the track, it's regularly worked. Okay. And there's the crossing there, back to what was Colville Station. The station's not there anymore. There's like a signal box and stuff like that, but the station is gone. Um, they are campaigning to reopen it though. You know, Colville's not a small place now, so maybe they will one day. But what I'm going to do is follow the branch that came off that line into Snipston Colliery 2. That was the second one that the uh, that the Stevenson sank and it was the one that lasted the longest. It went all the way up until 1983. But it's an interesting story because they sunk the first pit, failed, 
and they sunk the third pit and it failed. The second one, I say the successful one, they didn't even sink that. So they bought the land off a local landowner and it says in the deeds that there was already a coal mine there. So actually the success, I guess, was, was, was thanks to the geezer before. I'm literally on the track bed now and it follows it all the way through this car park in to Colville itself and there's a little crossing and stuff like that which is quite nice I mean it's crazy because it's right in the center of Colville and you'll see with the with the great reveal how this coal mine is basically in the center but it wouldn't have always been so Colville didn't exist until the industrial revolution and they say that the guy that owned Whitwick Colliery he called his house Colville as I guess a bit of a joke really and that that was why this place when it grew and grew because of the collieries became known as Colville I don't know how to verify that, but it's a cool story. And there we go, right in the middle of a car park. It's the first clue that we're on the track bed. I remember I said at the start that the incline was a means to an end. And I can just in the distance make out what that end is. There we go. There's two builders behind me arguing about someone stealing something from a cement mixer. I don't know if you can hear them shouting been going back and forth a while and there you go let's get across the road then now you can tell you're heading into the site of a colliery Snibstone Colliery 2 and there's the colliery park let's go and have a look there's a platform there but that's a new build look not sure why they've done that maybe they're planning something going forward I don't know but it's cool though. I wanted to film more of that crossing, to be honest, but those two lads were just going back and forth. And then one of them just kept saying at the end, why would I nick it? What would I do with it? What would I do with it? And I was just waiting and I thought, do you know what, I'm just gonna get on with it. There's some nice crossing goats though. Um, so to recap, this is the second colliery. This is Snipston Colliery 2, which opened in 1832 and closed in 1983. Which is quite a decent life, I guess, you know. Some of these collieries in this area didn't last at all. So at least this one was had a bit more about it. Along with the Whitwick colliery, that was the, the first one. Um, and that one lasted a bit longer as well. And I'm waiting to see an amazing spectacle any minute now. The path's getting ever so slightly wider now. And I think we're about to go in to the colliery yard. I'm, I'm, you know, if you turn around, there's that geezer there, and you can see the, the gates. That's the, that's the town centre. But as I said earlier, it wouldn't always have been, you know, this, the, the, the town grew around the colliery rather than the colliery being plonked in the middle of the town. There's some buffers there. This is great. I didn't even know this was here either. This was my brother. My brother was in the area um, about a week ago, and he messaged me. He was like, mate, you need to get on this. And he, um, he sent me a photo. I was in the gym and he sent me a photo of the signal box, which we're about to see. I'll give it away now. Anyway, and I was like, mate, I am, I am on my way. Look at this. And I can get a coffee as well. Dreamland. Oh, wow, the headstocks are still there, look. It's mad to think this closed when I was two. I know what you're thinking. Two years old in 1983. You don't look a day over 20. Um, but there's still good wagons here. Look at that. That's amazing. I don't know how much this has just been left and abandoned or how much, you know, stuff's been put back as in kind of like a bit of a ceremonial way but I, I, you know, I don't know because it's all overgrown there's wagons there in the distance are rusted they've taken over this bit I imagine this was railway land as well yeah almost certainly so they've taken that over but this they look like quite low headstocks as well don't they you know when you see I mean Clipston is just next level that's insane but even the others that you go to the, they seem slightly higher than that but there's railway kit, there's a winding arm. I guess it's been replaced. Amazing. Look at 
those headstocks. Yeah, you can tell the colliery, you know, lasted a while because you've got, you know, the red brick, the original red brick Victorian, and then you can see, you know, they loved corrugated iron, didn't they, in the 70s and 80s? Loved it. And now look at that beautiful signal box. It's kind of a crazy shape as well, isn't it? Because of, you know, how thin it is at the bottom and then it's, it's quite high. Apologize for the wind. There's a play park to the left. It looks great. There's loads of kids in the school, so you're not gonna film that. Um, Colville Crossing. There you go. That's beautiful. Amazing structure. So there's one side. And there's two sides. You know, I just love walking and looking at old stuff, to be honest. I don't know much about coal mining, but they sunk here. They sank two shafts nine feet apart, which don't seem like a lot. Do you know what I mean? Like if I was trying to find a coal seam, you'd go, right, I'll go one over there, maybe one hundred yards over there or whatever. But nine feet, you'd think, well, what's the difference in nine feet? Surely if you get it in the one, then you get it in that one. And if you miss it in that one, you're likely to miss it in that one as well, because it's only nine feet. But I wasn't a great industrialist, sort of father-son double act, was I? So I'll leave them. I'll leave them to it. They kind of know what they're doing. There you have it, Snipston number two colliery. So that's in 1900. They all look sharp as hell, don't they? Even though they've gone underground and whatever, they're still like, everyone made an effort to look decent. Look at that. Great photos. Incredible building. Look at that, that's what's digging out. Got myself caught on that. That's what's smashing away at the coal face then. Not like in the early days when it would have just been a guy with a pick. This is great though, isn't it? All these bits of kit, I mean, they're just left to, to rust, but at least they're not, you know, chucked out for scrap. There you go, look. that's what it was like underground. Oh, mate. Look at that. Women, girls, boys under 10. Jeez Louise, that is a tough gig. <sighs> You've got to be hard as nails, haven't you? Hard as nails. Now kids will kick off if they don't get sweets at the checkout. Look at that little engine as well. There is a a bit more infrastructure over there in that park, I think. But like I say, there's kids there, so I ain't gonna film there. I think it's minimal anyway. Yeah, it's just some like ceremonial uh, winding arms. We've seen the real thing, haven't we, to be fair. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I had such a great time in Whitby, do you know what I mean? Like the weather was dead nice and you've got these amazing views off the cliff tops and stuff like that. But there is something about being back in, in the industrial revolution in the Midlands, in the East Midlands. There's something special about that.
thank you so much for watching and subscribing and, and liking and commenting all the people that have been commenting on the on the videos i really appreciate that and i'll see you next time